Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story is titled My 36 Male Friends, 29 Male Friend, not sure of the age, Male Stole Food at a Restaurant and Tried to Justify His Actions. Was I Wrong to Call Him Out? So, I was involved in a situation the other night that has left me questioning my own moral perspective and the blurred line between right and wrong. On Friday evening, Aaron, 29 male, and I decided to grab dinner at our favorite local restaurant after work. On the way to the restaurant, we bumped into Aaron's friend, Jason, who decided to join us. I hadn't met Jason before, but was happy to have him tag along. My first impressions of Jason were that he was trying to be something that he wasn't, a bit of a Jack the Lad, but underneath the bravado, he seemed okay. As we sat at our table, we were laughing and joking. I was getting to know Jason a little more and we were having a civilized time. Nothing too rowdy or drunken at this stage as we were all, after all, just out for a meal after work. The restaurant was busy as it was a Friday evening and the waiting staff seemed a little rushed off their feet, so we had to wait a while to be served. No problem as there was a bar and we were content with our beers for now and to just chat. As we started to get more hungry, we began studying the menu, weighing up our options as we waited for the waitress to arrive to take our order. Our waitress seemed to be having a rough night. It was clear that she was juggling multiple tables, scribbling down orders, and trying to manage her own composure amidst the chaos. I sympathize with her as I know from my own experience that working in the service industry can be incredibly challenging and pretty thankless sometimes. In the chaos of the busy dining room, the waitress accidentally delivered another table's food order to our table. It wasn't much, just a bowl of fries and a large garlic pizza bread, but it was obviously a mix-up as we hadn't ordered any food yet. I was about to alert the waitress to her error when Jason dove his hand into the bowl of fries and stuffed them into his mouth. At the same time, with his other hand, he picked up a slice of the garlic pizza bread. This all happened really quickly and Aaron and I just looked at each other open-mouthed, not sure what had just happened. Had we missed Jason placing an order or something? Uh, Jason, I stammered. We haven't ordered yet, have we? I don't think that's our food. I think that's been a mix-up. Jason just grinned at me and replied. Well, it came to our table, so it's ours now. And I've started eating it, so she, meaning the waitress, can't take it back now. It was her mistake, so I won't be paying for it. Meanwhile, the table whose food it was had noticed, and they were waving at the waitress looking slightly annoyed that someone else was eating their food. I expect, given how busy the restaurant was, they'd been waiting for quite some time. The waitress looked really flustered and unsure of what to do. Aaron and I apologized to her for Jason's behavior and told him that he was being an ass and that he should hand it back. He just shrugged and said, Well, she can't give it to them now as I've touched it. It'll only end up in the bin, so I may as well have it. Then he looked at the waitress and said she could get the other table some more food. The waitress walked over to the other table and I could see her apologizing profusely as the couple appeared to berate her for a mistake. I couldn't hear what was being said, but I could see how disgruntled they were. I felt real sorry for her and guilty for the position Jason had put her in. The manager ended up being called, and from his point of view, the blame fell squarely on the waitress's shoulders, as she was responsible for the initial mix-up. I was so embarrassed to be sitting at a table with Jason at this point. He seemed to have no remorse and was actually enjoying watching the drama unfold as he munched on his stolen food. I could see the waitress wiping away tears as she walked back into the kitchen and later brought out replacements for the couple. Bet she won't be getting a tip from them tonight, chuckled Jason as he watched. I can't believe he found the entire ordeal so amusing. He had deliberately just got a hard-working woman into trouble for his own gain and amusement and he saw nothing wrong with it. What the fuck? Aaron and I tried to explain to him that what he had done was really low and basically amounted to theft. We explained the trouble the waitress must have got into and that this is a livelihood he is playing with. But Jason just didn't seem to see it that way. He believed that the waitress had brought trouble upon herself for not paying enough attention. In his mind, no harm was done since the other table eventually received their rightful food. Probably for free, by the way, of an apology from the manager and he had also got to enjoy a free meal. He'd failed to see the bigger picture and the impact of his actions on the waitress's well-being. That was it for Aaron and me. 
the mood had completely changed and the consequences of Jason's prank, as he called it, left a bitter taste that had soured the evening. He just could not see that his actions in the pursuit of amusement and unintended consequences for others. In his mind, no one really suffered as he just told Aaron and me to lighten up and stop being so serious. For me, his logic was totally misguided. Aaron and I finished our beers and got up to leave, still not having ordered food. On our way out, we caught the waitress and apologized again for Jason's behavior. We handed over $30 as compensation for the flack she had received and the tip she must have lost. She smiled and thanked us for our compassion and concern. On our way home, Aaron explained that he didn't actually know Jason that well and he was just a friend of a friend that happened to join them occasionally on nights out. He said he didn't think he'd be having much to do with him in the future. No surprise there, really. In Jason's eyes, Aaron and I overreacted to a harmless joke and no one really got hurt. He thinks we're assholes for calling him out on his behavior. But Aaron and I just don't see it like that. As far as we're concerned, Jason decided to have a laugh at someone else's expense and the cost to the waitress both financially and emotionally were inexcusable. If it simply have said that the food was not asked the moment she put it in front of us, then she would have been able to rectify her mistake without anyone getting in trouble. So am I the arsehole for calling Jason out on his behavior? I was reading this and I've been in like a real similar situation and it's scary. I went out with a bunch of old work friends from my last job. Some of them had left that job as well, but they were just all meeting up for a couple of beers and a get together. I was the first one there, sat down, grabbed a beer and the rest sort of like filtered in slowly. Pretty packed pub. It was just really busy that night and there was just people everywhere. The table next to us, I could have literally reached across to them and touched them. That's how close the tables were in this place. We were all hunched around this table in a corner in a little, like a little booth. Same thing happened. Table next to us ordered a basket of bread. It turned up, but it was put on our table. One of the guys from this table, I wasn't massively keen on anyway, reached across, started eating the bread. They said they were super hungry. You know, this is a freebie. I at the time hadn't even noticed that, that it wasn't our bread. I thought maybe they placed an order at the bar and it got delivered to us, etc, etc. But the table next to us started kicking off because they were saying like, where's our bread sort of thing. And then the woman looked across at our table and said, have you been eating that? And the guy on our table claimed, oh, we thought it was a freebie kind of thing. And then the waitress just sort of walked off. But in the meantime, after the waitress walked away, he started chuckling to himself like, <laughs> you know, we got a freebie. But the table was right next to us and they were looking at him like, what the fuck? So the guy next to me, who was my old manager, he just sort of, he piped up straight away. He was like, that's not on, mate. You really fucking embarrassed me by doing that. And then he apologized to the table next to us. I haven't been in a very, very similar situation. I can tell you right now, I can remember the embarrassment from sitting there. It all happened very quickly. My manager spoke up very quickly, so there wasn't very much input from me, but I just remember speaking to my manager because my manager turned to me afterwards. He said, look, mate, I'm, I'm sorry for causing the scene. I was like, no, don't apologize at all. That's totally out of order, in my opinion, what he's done. And, you know, thank you for speaking up kind of thing. Yes, it was a mistake. I'm not sure if they would have been able to just pick up the food and pass it to the other table anyway, but just morally, it just seems wrong to me. It wasn't a no harm, no foul situation like Jason seems to be implying because the waitress did get in trouble. The people who actually ordered the food did have to wait a lot longer. Mistakes happen and just having some compassion towards another person and trying to help them out in a situation is not a hard thing to do. Just call out and say, oh, are you sure that's for us? Isn't a hard thing to do rather than stuffing your hands straight away in the food and ruining it. Like I said, I'm not sure if they had been able to use it anyway as soon as it's put on that table because of people were surrounding it or whatever. I'm not sure on the rules on that. But just trying to help out another human who's already flustered in a really busy situation. It's just not fucking hard. But a couple of comments on this one. So it starts off. While I understand the concern raised by the OP, I have to side with Jason on this one. In my opinion, accepting another table's food order is not as big of a deal as it's made out to be. Firstly, let's acknowledge that the mistake was made by the waitress. She mixed up the order and it's her responsibility to rectify the situation. By accepting the food, Jason was simply making the most of an unfortunate situation. It's not like they intentionally swiped the plate from someone else's table. Secondly, the argument that it's stealing seems exaggerated. We're talking about a temporary inconvenience caused by a mix-up and the restaurant will replace the order for the affected table. 
unlike anyone was deprived of their food forever. The harm caused in this situation is minimal and it's not worth the airspace it was given. It's important to maintain perspective and not blow things out of proportion, so in my opinion, the OP might have overreacted a bit. Next comment says, I can't help but side with the OP on this one. While it may seem like a trivial incident to some, accepting another table's food order is undeniably in the wrong. We shouldn't brush it off as insignificant or inconsequential. It's true that the waitress made a mistake, but that doesn't absolve Jason of their responsibility to act with integrity and respect for others. By knowingly consuming someone else's food, he is essentially stealing. Whether it's a plate, a food, or someone else's wallet, the principle remains the same. Taking something that doesn't belong to you is ethically and morally wrong. Furthermore, Jason's nonchalant attitude is concerning. To dismiss the issue as a mere inconvenience for the affected table and mistake for the restaurant to rectify shows a lack of empathy and personal accountability. It's a slippery slope to rationalize one's actions based on the assumption that someone else will fix the problem. OP, by calling Jason out, you demonstrated a strong moral compass and a commitment to doing what is right. Integrity and accountability should never be compromised, even in seemingly trivial circumstances. The foundation of any relationship, including friendship, relies on mutual respect and shared values. It's important to surround ourselves with individuals who align with our moral beliefs. Another comment says, wow, I'm truly taken aback by Jason's behavior in this story. It's mind-boggling to witness such a lack of basic ethics and personal responsibility. I wholeheartedly agree with Opie's decision to call this guy out for accepting someone else's food order and putting the spotlight so unfavorably on the waitress. She made a simple, honest mistake and did not deserve his disrespect. Not the arsehole. And another comment says, The waitress made an honest mistake by bringing the wrong food to the table. Yes, she is accountable for her error, but that doesn't give anyone the right to take advantage of the situation. By accepting and consuming food that wasn't intended for him, Jason essentially engaged in theft, not the arsehole. Another comment says, It's disheartening to see how nonchalantly Jason shrugged off his actions, claiming that the mistake was solely the waitress's fault. Yes, she made a mistake, but that doesn't absolve Jason of his own responsibility to do what's right. Taking someone else's food without hesitation or remorse is not a trivial matter. It shows a disregard for the rights and property of others. OP, you were completely justified in calling Jason out. It takes courage to stand up against unethical behavior. By speaking up, you demonstrated your commitment to integrity and respect for others, not the arsehole. And a final comment which says, Jason's belief that no one suffered from his actions is deeply flawed. Yes, the other table eventually received their correct order, but that doesn't erase the fact that their dining experience was marred by confusion and inconvenience. Additionally, the waitress faced repercussions from her manager due to the incident, which likely caused her significant stress. It's essential to hold ourselves accountable for our actions, regardless of who made the initial mistake. By refusing to take responsibility for his actions and finding amusement in someone else's misfortune, Jason displayed a lack of empathy, emotional immaturity, and a lack of morals. Kudos to UOP for standing up for what is right, not the arsehole. The OP did update the post and they said, Hey everyone, I wanted to provide a quick update on the situation I shared earlier. After some contemplation, I decided to take action and wrote an email to the manager of the restaurant, addressing the incident and shedding light on Jason's despicable behavior. In the email, I made sure to emphasize that the waitress had made an honest mistake. I explained that her error was relatively small and that it was Jason who escalated the situation and showed a lack of remorse for his actions. I highlighted how the waitress did her best to rectify her mistake, but Jason seemed determined to sabotage her for his own amusement and gain. I made it clear to the manager that I did not believe the waitress should be punished in any way for her mistake. I expressed my understanding of the challenges faced by those working in the service industry, and I apologized for the inconvenience and upset caused by Jason's actions. By reaching out to the manager, I hope that they will take appropriate action to address Jason's behavior and prevent similar incidents from happening in the future that's about it for now. Needless to say, neither Aaron nor I have had anything to do with Jason since the incident and do not plan to in the future. We have not yet returned to the restaurant yet, but do intend to at some point. If I see the waitress there again, I'll be sure to give her an extra big tip for her troubles. Thanks everyone. And one more final update, which says, everyone just wanted to drop in here and say that I did return to the restaurant about a month after the incident with Jason, this time with just Aaron. We met the waitress again and she recognized us immediately. 
we apologized again for Jason's behavior and emphasized how appalled we were. She thanked me for my email and said the manager had shown it to her. He said the email had clarified the situation. He hadn't realized that Jason had literally grabbed the food the moment it hit the table, giving the waitress no time to rectify the mistake. The manager thought the food had been left with us for a while and that the waitress had allowed her mistake to continue. Apparently, the manager has since banned Jason from the restaurant. And guess what? I now have a date with said waitress. We got chatting as she served us and it turns out she is really intelligent and kind. She's also pretty good looking to boot, so I asked her out. I'm seeing her next week, so I guess morality and respect win out after all. Wish me luck, everyone. And thanks again. And like I said, I can feel the feelings of when I was in that situation as well. The embarrassment of sitting in that table and just sitting there seeing someone who thought that it was perfectly acceptable to do this and, you know, there was no harm done and feeling like absolutely not. There was harm done in that. I'm glad that you did make that email to the restaurant to rectify the situation. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And this story comes from OKProblem116 okay and says, Am I the asshole for charging my pregnant cousin for a new wedding dress after she told me about her pregnancy last minute? I, 29 female, own a bridal shop. My cousin Lucy, 27 female, is getting married in two months and I designed and tailored her wedding dress as a gift. She paid me for the materials. It will take another week to finish the dress and I constantly update Lucy on the status of her dress and ask if she is happy at every stage and if she has any more ideas. She would make the old comment but never anything major. The dress in total took me just over four months. Last weekend, her and her fiance hosted a family dinner and at the end, Lucy announced she was pregnant. At the dinner, I congratulated her and her fiancé. She came to my store with my aunt that week for her final fitting. I again mentioned the pregnancy and asked how far along she was. She was 12 weeks along and told me how hard to keep the pregnancy a secret. I told her the dress wouldn't fit her at 20-ish weeks during the wedding and she said she knew and asked me to tailor the dress to fit her new proportions as she would be showing heavily at the wedding. I told her I can't do that due to the intricate beading that we'll have to carefully remove and reattach. I told her she might as well get a new dress as it would be easier for me to start from scratch and essentially, I was just making her a second wedding dress. She agreed and then I gave her the invoice for a new dress. I gave her a breakdown and charged her for materials, tailoring, labor and overtime, still with a discount. I will have to work outside my hours to make her the new dress on time as I have a busy schedule with existing clients that pay full price. I told her if she had told me about the pregnancy from the second she had found out, I might have been able to address the dress then, but it is complete now. She said her fiancé wanted to keep it private, which I understand, but I wouldn't have told anyone, and I only needed to know for the dress purposes. She called me the arsehole for not understanding where she is coming from and said she will only pay for materials. I refused to back down and told her that this close to the wedding, she will struggle to finalize a new dress she likes and get it tailored in time as she will be pregnant. I also refused to give her the dress sketch as it was my design and I didn't want her to replicate my work elsewhere. She left angry with her mum, who later called me up to say Lucy is upset about not having a dress this close to the wedding and that I am being cruel because this dress is not good for the baby. Odd Task says, not the asshole. She knew she was pregnant and didn't tell you. You're under no obligation to foot the bill. Sucks that it will cost her money, but actions have consequences. Silver Plated Lining says, I was the bride in this situation. And the person who was working on my dress was a very good friend of my brother. Not someone I would usually tell that I would be 11 weeks pregnant at the wedding. However, I knew that for her job to be done well and for my dress to fit me, she needed to know. I told her and also told her that it wasn't public info just yet. She made my dress fit me and didn't tell anyone. Opie is not the arsehole, but the bride sure is. Mobius says not the arsehole. This sub is filled with brides who seem to think their family members in a serious profession will work for free with limited information because family. Guarantee she would not have tried to pull this with a bridal shop where she wasn't related. Let's have one more comment from Lady Stetson who says not the arsehole. You gave her a free wedding dress. I think it's fine to say... I don't have time and resources to make a completely new wedding dress for free. But I would give her the dress that you made and give her the option to go somewhere else to get it tailored. If she's stuck on that. That way you don't have to deal with her anymore. 
and she can pin the failure slash frustration on the dress on someone else. Above all, I just encourage you to find a peaceful resolution here. Avoiding drama has its own value. I'm not saying do the work for free, but have a meeting with her, her mother and her fiance, and really try to find a resolution and help them understand your limitations and all the work you've done out of kindness up to this point. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for joining me today, getting involved in the stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. Please never forget that. You are amazing. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love. You bloody cheeky so-and-so. <laughs>